Welcome to Mass at St. Michael the Archangel Parish. Our celebrant today is Father Branson. Today, we celebrate Palm Sunday. Intentions of Kelly and Mary Grant, Suzanne Bainter, and the repose of the soul of Carol Myers. We do have a few announcements. If you are new to St. Michael's and would like more information, welcome packets are located at the greeters table. If you are interested in becoming a volunteer for any of the parish ministries here at St. Michael's, please stop by the greeters table to sign up. CCD students, please sign in at the greeters table. Thank you. Please see the bulletin for the Holy Week schedule. Please stand for the entrance hymn, All Glory, Lord, and Honor. Good to see us, God. Brethren, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald for the whole church, beginning the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. It was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps. So that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, may have a share also in his resurrection and his life. Ooh. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we will follow Christ the King in exaltation, and reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. As he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany, the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples. He said, go into the village opposite you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone should ask you, why are you untying it? You will answer, the master has need of it. So those who had been sent off and found everything just as he told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, Why are you untying this colt? They answered, The master has need of it. So they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the colt, and helped Jesus to mount. As he rode along, the people were spreading their cloaks on the road. And now he's approaching the slope of the Mount of Olives. The whole multitude of his disciples began to praise God aloud with joy for all the mighty deeds they had seen. They proclaimed, 
Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Jesus said in reply, I tell you, if they keep silent, the stones will cry out. The Gospel of the Lord. Please come forward and pick up your palms. Almighty ever-living God, who is an example of humility for the human race to follow, cause our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection. Who lives and reigns with you in the image of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spinning. The Lord God is my help, Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Be my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let me deliver him. Let him rescue him, he who loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, be not far from me. O oh, my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him. All you descendants of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord.
The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Mark When the hour came, Jesus took his place at table with the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves, for I tell you that from this time on, I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given up for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. And yet behold, the hand of the one who is to betray me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And began to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. Then an argument broke out among them about which one of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest, and the leader as the servant. For whoever is greater, the one seated at table or the one who serves, is it not the one seated at table? I am among you as the one who serves. It is you who have stood by me in my trials. And I confer a kingdom on you, just as my Father has conferred one on me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has determined to sift all of you like wheat. But I have prayed that your own faith may not fail, and once you have turned back, you must strengthen your brothers. He said to him, Lord, I am prepared to go to prison and to die with you. But he replied, I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows this day, you will deny three times that you know me. He said to them, When I sent you forth without a money bag or a sack or sandals, were you in need of anything? No, nothing, they replied. He said to them, But now one who has a money bag should take it and likewise a sack. And the one who does not have a sword should sh sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me, namely, he was counted among the wicked, and indeed what is written about me is coming to fulfillment. Then they said, Lord, look, there are two swords here. But he replied, it is enough. Then going out, he went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not undergo the test. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them and kneeling, he prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Still, not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was in such agony, and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he rose from prayer and returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping from grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not undergo the test. While he was still speaking, a crowd approached, and in front was one of the twelve, a man named Judas. 
he went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His disciples realized what was about to happen, and they asked, Lord, shall we strike with a sword? And one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said in reply, Stop, no more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. And Jesus said to the chief priests and the temple guards and elders who had come with him, Have you come out against a robber with swords and clubs? Day after day I was with you in the temple area, and you did not seize me. But this is your hour, the time for the power of darkness. After arresting him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it, and Peter sat down with them. When a maid saw him seated in the light, she looked intently at him and said, This man too was with him, but he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A short while later, someone else saw him and said, You too are one of them. But Peter answered, Peter answered, My friend, I am not. About an hour later, still another insisted, Assuredly, this man was with him, for he also is a Galilean. But Peter said, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was saying this, the cock crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter, and then Peter remembered the word of the Lord and how he said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will three times deny me. He went out and began to weep bitterly. The men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculing and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? And they reviled him and saying many other things against him. <clears throat> When day came, the council of elders of the people met, both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before their Sanhedrin. They said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he replied to them, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question, you will not respond. But from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further need have we for testimony? We have heard it from his own mouth. Then the whole assembly of them arose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, We found this man misleading our people. He opposes the payment of taxes to Caesar and maintains that he is the Christ, a king. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him and replied, You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priest in the crowds. I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, He is itching, inciting the people with his teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began, even to here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. And upon learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at the time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time, for he had heard about him, and he had hoped to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but he gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes, meanwhile, stood by accusing him harshly. Herod and his soldiers treated him contemptuously and mocked him. And after clothing him in a resplendent garb, they sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies forever. Pilate then summoned the chief priests, the rulers, and the people and said to them, You brought this man to me and accused him of inciting the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence and have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him, nor did Herod, for he sent him back to us. So no capital crime has been committed by him, 
Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. But altogether they shouted out, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us. Now Barabbas had been in prison for a rebellion and had taken place in the city and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus, but they continued their shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate addressed them a third time, What evil has this man done? I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been in prison for rebellion and murder for whom they asked. And he handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain, of a certain Simon of Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country. And after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. For indeed, the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the womb that never bore, and the breast that never nursed. At that time, people will say to the mountains, Fall upon us, and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him, there, him and the criminals there, one on the right and the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? <clears throat> Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuked him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have con been condemned justly, for the sentences we received correspond to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now it was about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. Let us kneel. Let us stand. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for the spectacle saw what had happened, they returned from home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances stood at a distance, including the women who had followed him from Galilee and saw these events. Now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who, though he was a member of the council, had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was awaiting the kingdom of God. 
He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. It was a day of preparation, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come from Galilee with him followed behind, and when they had seen the tomb and the way in which his body was laid in it, they returned and prepared spices and perfumed oils. Then they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a shorter form. I just found that out. Five pages instead of nine. <laughs> but we won't do that one. On Palm Sunday every year, we read one of the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, or Luke. On Good Friday, we read the, John, the Gospel according to John. Now, each of the Synoptic Gospels is based upon the same past literature that they found, but other things are added. And three details that are different about Luke's Gospel is that he proclaims Jesus' innocence over and over and over again. This is the only Gospel where Pilate says that Jesus is innocent three times. Herod says that Jesus is innocent. The Roman centurion, Jesus is innocent. The good thief, Jesus is innocent. So there's no doubt that an innocent man was killed for political purposes. Collateral damage, we use it today. The second point that Luke makes is Jesus's forgiving nature. We call Luke's the gospel of divine mercy. The slave's ear is cut off in all three gospels, but it's only healed in Luke's. Pilate and Herod, bitter enemies, become friends for life, BFFs. And Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. This is the only gospel he says that. So it's a divine mercy gospel. And the difference in Luke also is there's no crowning of thorns. There's no beating. There's no carrying of the cross. All of this he lays out. Yes, we know Jesus is mistreated, but he leaves this out because he wants to focus on other aspects that we as Christians need to know. And so we see those three things. Now, what they have in common is the entry into Jerusalem. Jesus has been in hiding for a little while. He's been afraid to go to Jerusalem because they have an arrest warrant out for him. And then he knows they're going to kill him. But as an able-bodied Jewish male, he is required by church law to show up at the temple three times a year and offer sacrifice. And so he's going to do that because Jesus doesn't break the law. He fulfills it. And so he shows up. But what has been building for this time is that everyone believes that he is going to set Israel free from the Romans. He is going to be a political king. Now, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the religious leaders are afraid of this. Yes, they hate Rome, but 
it's better to have the devil you know than the one you don't. So they don't want Rome to come along and say, oh, so he's your king now? Because Rome is known to destroy nations and entire peoples. So they don't want that to happen. They don't want their religion destroyed because it's happened before, 200 years before Jesus. So they're worried about this to the paranoia. And so they want to make sure that Jesus doesn't become king. But the people do. The people know. Word spreads fast if you're on the lower levels of the church and not the upper. And so the people say, here comes our king. And so they line the road with their palm branches and their cloaks and they wave palm branches and Jesus is riding on a colt that has never been ridden. Now, as a good American out west, you sit there and think, now, wait a minute, what happens if you get on a horse that hasn't been ridden? You're not on it very long. But everybody, evidently, donkeys are different. I don't know. But Jesus gets on a donkey that hasn't been ridden. This is super symbolic, very symbolic. When Caesars and when kings in the Roman Empire come back from war, if there's a time of peace, they ride a colt that has never been ridden. If they're still at war, they come marching in on a horse or a chariot. So Jesus is riding a colt that has never been ridden, and the people are seeing and thinking, we are going to have peace because our political king has arrived not really understanding and remembering the scriptures of the Old Testament that said he's not going to be an earthly king. He's going to be a king of heaven and earth, heaven and everywhere else. So he's not going to be the king people think of. But yet, this is what's happening. Everyone believes he's a political savior, not a theological or spiritual supernatural savior. And so that's why we have Palm Sunday because it commemorates the beginning of Holy Week, the beginning of Passover for the Jews, Holy Week for Christians. And we watch. Today is all joyful. Hallelujah. Emmanuel. Praise the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna means he saves. And they're using it in a political sense. But all of a sudden we're going to go to a time of sorrow. Life is like that, joys and sorrows. And so this holiest of weeks, we go from joy to sorrow, back to joy. This is something no one anticipated because our king didn't sit on a real throne. He sat on a throne of his own making the cross. And so we see that they were sadly mistaken. The religious leaders were afraid that the the city of Jerusalem and the synagogue would be destroyed because of Jesus. It wasn't. But it was destroyed 40 years after Jesus died by the Romans because of another reason. And they didn't leave a stone on top of a stone. So the prophecy that religious leaders made, oh no, this man is going to be the death of our nation, was they were a little bit wrong. It was going to happen, but with somebody else. So when we look at this week, Remember our lives. Several people have told me, and priests including, have said, you know, when times get tough in their lives, they meditate on this gospel. They meditate on this particular event. And those you ask them why, they'll say, because it doesn't end with sorrow. It doesn't end with suffering. It ends with joy. It ends with rejoicing. And so if they're having a downtime in their lives, they read it to remind themselves, hey, the good times are coming. The best time is yet to come. And so we need to remember that as well. No matter what's going on around us, no matter what's happening in our lives, joy will ultimately come back. And we don't have to lay and wallow in sorrow or suffering. We just remember that's temporary. Yeah, it might hurt while we're doing it, but it's temporary.
So we look in today, we look at the end of this week, and we say, ah, that's what life is about. Joy at birth, suffering, sorrow as you go through life, and then as you die, joy once again. So we're surrounded by joy. We just have to remember that. We just have to remember the key word that makes us able to remember that, and that is hope. The hope that we're brought about by Jesus' resurrection. And so we enter the Holy Week, the holiest week of the year, and we should make some changes in our schedules this week so that we can participate in the special ceremonies that go back to the beginning of our church. God bless you. I believe. Our king has entered his city. Our palms and cries of homage fade away as the words of the gospel tell the story of his suffering and death. Let us bring our prayers to the Father through the Son he gave up for us with love beyond our comprehension. For the church all around the world, following the Savior during Holy Week, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for peoples of all races and nations who seek peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who suffer mental, physical, or spiritual anguish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For a spirit of penance, reflection, and gratitude during these chosen days, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For our sick, bereaved, and special projects. For the gentle repose of the faithful departed, especially the repose of the soul of Carol Myers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord and Father, with serene courage, your Son went forth to die for us. Grant us your share in his strength as we bring these prayers before you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand. At hand that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us. From the time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself, through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer. The new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation. As they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all. While they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit and so fill with the wonder that we stole the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts as without end we acclaim. <laughs> Indeed, holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost, 
and could not approach you. You loved us with the greatest love for your Son, who alone is just, and himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. Before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself, through his blood to be shed on the cross. He took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming. We offer you, who are a faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those who unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart. Gilbert Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom. And to the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven. The Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Mm -hmm. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Good afternoon. I'm Kathy Ernst, coordinator for the prison and jail ministry here at St. Michael the Archangel Parish. I'm in need of volunteers for the jail. I'm reaching out to you today with a request that you consider joining me in this very rewarding ministry. Who can join the jail ministry? Any one of you that are sitting in the seat today. Think about what God is calling you to do next. You can change a life, you can soften a heart. To witness the Holy Spirit in action is life changing. What would you be doing? You'd be leading a communion service, which includes the distribution of the Holy Eucharist, the source and summit of our Catholic faith. Where? At the Pinal County Adult Detention Center in Florence, AKA the jail. Now the jail houses men and women who have recently been arrested, waiting arraignment or hearing or hearing or trial or awaiting sentencing or their sentence might be less than a year. In the scope of things, the men and women in the jail are short term. When? Sunday mornings uh, from 8 a.m. until about 10.30. How often? That's up to you. I will work with you and your schedule. Once a month, twice a month, four or five times a month, might skip a month. Um, I'm really, it's really something that's flexible. Please consider joining this important work of supporting and encouraging our Catholic uh, faith of those behind bars. The inmates come each week to hear the word of God, to receive Jesus in the blessed sacrament, to be encouraged in their faith and affirmed in their humanity. I cannot think of a single time that I visited these men and women that they failed to thank me for coming. I especially want to thank Father Branson for his continued support of and participation in the prison and jail ministry at St. Michael's. Do you hear God calling you? If so, then meet me at the greeters table after mass. 
Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. And yes, I want to thank God that Kathy came to our parish so that we could have a larger prison and a jail ministry. And when she says it can make a difference, it does. When they, light, when they see you, their faces light up, and they hear the word of God, receive communion, it's their high point for the week if they get it. And the worst thing that could happen to them is to be locked down and say, no, we can't come in. I've gone behind the door bars of prisons where there's lifers and there's other thing, other guys that have long sentences and things. They will walk us to the gate and say, we're going to be your bodyguards today. But nobody's going to bother us because they're glad to see us. Hey, normal people care about us. We're not forgotten behind these bars. The greatest tragedy for them is for their families to write them off and nobody to come visit them or anything like that. So it's a tremendous difference in the lives of somebody and it can change them for the rest of their lives too. Let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as to the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family gathered here, from whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered in the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God, St. Michael the Archangel. Defend us now. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. Rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking to ruin his souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus, to you, O blessed Joseph, who we come in our afflictions, and having implored the help of your most holy spouse, we confidently invoke your patronage also, through that charity which bound you to the Immaculate Virgin Mother of God, and through the paternal love with which you embrace the child Jesus. We humbly beg you graciously to regard the inheritance which Jesus Christ has purchased by his blood, and with your power and strength to aid us in our necessities. O most watchful guardian of the Holy Family, defend the chosen children of Jesus Christ. O most loving Father, ward off from us every contagion of error and corrupted 